here today. I wonder if maybe anyone who appeared in the film would be willing to stand up and we can give them a round of applause too. Uh, we've got Mayor's Mr. Barbara here, uh, Michael Lennon, the expert, David Gendy, uh, Paul Pelosi in the back. Elizabeth. Elizabeth of all the films I've ever worked on, this was the smartest group of interviewees I have ever interviewed, and nobody fell short. It was just one smarter than the next. Uh, I'm very excited to get to you all to hear your questions and thoughts, um, but I'll, I'll set some things up. And before we start, I also want to acknowledge and thank Zeitgeist Films, the distributor, on uh, this this film and all the work that they've done, Emily Rousseau and Nancy Kirsten, I think you guys are here. So a round of applause for Zeitgeist. It's not easy bringing any movies to the theater these days, especially as one as like complex and huge and daunting and thought provoking as this. So I'll start with you, Jeff. Which what gave you the audacious idea to take Norman Mailer on? The audacious man himself. Oh, oh yeah. No, I, I, I had, when I was sort of an artist and storyteller in training, I was reading Mailer when I was young, and he represented, you know, all of this, the, the unabashed artistic courage, um, this idea that to begin to deeply understand the human condition, you have to be less afraid of the response, as Daphne so eloquently says at the end. Um, it was inspiring. It was challenging. And uh, a few years ago, his, some of his kids, I think it was Danielle and Buffalo, um, reached out with the idea of doing a documentary for his, what would have been his centennial, his 100th uh, birthday. And after telling him all the reasons, I was very excited about that idea, not least of which is how relevant I felt his ideas were today. Um, I said that this would have to be warts and all. Like, we're, we're not interested in making, you know, a, a comprehensive survey of all his work, sorting out the good from the bad, and nor do we want to make a hagiography that just celebrates his enduring thoughts on the country. Um, this would, in equal parts, need to be a cautionary tale and, and show his ego and show his, his flaws and his mistakes. Um, and then there was a pause and Buffalo said, well, why don't we start with the stabbing? <laughs> and they thought, it's a good sign and we were lockstep from there forward. Um, so working with the family, you know, we all had the same vision that we could, um, you know, make something that, I, I think we said on that call that you don't have to love Mailer to benefit from his mind or to feel ignited by his ideas and you don't have to hate him to learn from his mistakes. And so we were gonna take on the task of you know, trying to balance um, that, sort of that dichotomy, these, these opposing dimensions of him. Well, not showing the warts would have been not only hugely disrespectful to him, but also to the audience. I mean, this is a man who in the last century um, challenged certainly America in showing his warts. Um, so Vicky, how did you come uh, on board and what was the process of starting to produce and write and, and meet the family? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, um, well, I had worked with Jeff previously on uh, this series for Netflix, Remastered, and um, we had a very great working relationship. And so he called me and he said, I have this documentary, it's about Norman Mailer. <laughs> and I was familiar with Norman Mailer um, I think I had read his book about why are we at war when I was in high school, but I didn't know anything about him or his personal life. So I said, I'll get back to you and looked him up and I was like, hmm, <laughs> do, is, do I want it? Knowing the things that he did, is he somebody that I want to delve into? And I, I wasn't sure for obvious reasons. Um, and, and then I couldn't stop thinking about him and I felt really, challenged and curious and I, I wanted to know more and I thought well then I have to do it I have to dig into this so we started and I think putting together all of the interviews we did very quickly we did two weeks in New York jam-packed days Jeff and I split the interviews and that was like boot camp for learning about Norman Mailer it was like all day, every day, all of these incredible family members and experts who knew him better than we did, who had known him for decades and studied him. 
we learned from them and just were really open to hearing everything that they had to say and their personal experiences. And from that, those two weeks, I think we had a bunch of conversations throughout that week forming the story as we were doing all of these interviews. And basically the week after that, Jeff had come up with this idea. What if we do this like tongue in cheek chapters idea? And the first one he said was, don't be a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> and I was like, I, I love that. And we went with that and we just kept thinking of, and people had said so many during the interviews. So that, it just kind of all fell into place. Um, how long the process took from initial idea and reaching out to festival premiere? Oh, years. so Festival Premiere was a lot longer yeah. for other reasons, yeah. but it was a 11 month project um, all, all in all. Yeah, we had a good a good lifespan in the edit. Um, we did the interviews in several chunks, um, kept certain people that we knew uh, could fill in the holes like Michael Lennon for the end so that if there was anything missing, we could do three or four uh, much later in the process when we knew where we needed those interviews and then had a massive archival process going the whole time. Um, 11 months is astonishing for any documentary. I was ready for you to say seven years or something. <laughs> That's, I mean, 11 months is like, I've never heard that. Um, so Susan, uh, two questions for you. Um, did Norman, was Norman ever open to the idea of a documentary being made during his lifetime? If so, if not, why not? And then the second question is, I guess the family's decision to finally do this now and with Jeff and Vicky. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I don't recall uh, him ever talking about having a documentary made, although there were so many interviews and so many talk shows and so many, uh, he was you know, on the news and on TV sort of all the time. Uh, there were books written about him, I remember, uh, several biographies, and he never enjoyed them. <laughs> he, he always thought that there was something missing. And uh, I think he would have liked Mike Lennon's biography very much if he had read it. But um, at that point, with the biography, he was ready to, uh, with Mike Lennon, he was ready to give him all the information. I think before that, he just didn't, it was curious about Norman because he, um, being such a public figure, he was a very private man at the same time. So he wouldn't want everyone to know what he was thinking, how he was thinking. And I think he would have felt a little bit uh, bashful about having a documentary about him. <laughs> but when John Buffalo called me and said, hey, something really exciting is happening. Would you like to be in the movie? And I said, me in the movie? Of course. I'd love to be in the movie. Uh, what movie? <laughs> Doesn't talk about Jeff, and he talks about you, Vicky, and he said it's a, it's a great team, uh, and uh, you have to be in it, and it, we're all going to be in it. And I said, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, when I'm in New York, I'll, of course, I will. So I was very happy to be in this, uh, in the part of it. Very happy. To be. I noticed this while watching and just thinking about the documentary question all of that footage that you see are documentaries that were made about him during his life, many of them, um, but a lot of them were European documentaries. We got footage from a Swedish documentary, two German documentaries, a French filmmaker. Um, there weren't a lot of American documentaries made about him, but they were, were not across the board like this. It was focusing on like, you know, him running for mayor, like, a specific moment. A new book or something. Right. Right after I asked.